Traditionally, bariatric surgeries have been classified as restrictive, malabsorptive, or a combination of both. Restrictive procedures involve anatomical changes that reduce the stomach size so the patient experiences satiety faster. Malabsorptive procedures rearrange the gastrointestinal tract to absorb fewer calories, and combined approaches do just that. They reduce the size of the stomach and promote malabsorption. Although some publications continue to use this classification system, like calling the sleeve gastrectomy a restrictive procedure and the Ruin Y gastric bypass a combined procedure, the current understanding of the mechanisms of action has shifted away from it. That's because researchers now recognize that restriction and malabsorption offer an incomplete explanation for the weight loss observed, and that other factors are at play, such as a change in the secretion and activity of gastrointestinal hormones. The first section of this video is going to focus on restriction and malabsorption. From there, we'll look at some changes to gastrointestinal hormones that occur, then we'll explore two other proposed mechanisms of action. For this video, I'll only be considering the five types of bariatric surgery I've already covered on this channel. The sleeve gastrectomy, the Ruin Y gastric bypass, the one anastomosis gastric bypass, the duodenal switch, and the Sadie S. With each of these procedures, restriction plays a role. The stomach's capacity is reduced, albeit to different degrees, and the gastric emptying time is faster, meaning chyme reaches the small intestine faster than it does with normal anatomy. One of the ways a smaller stomach helps to decrease total energy intake is that it leads to an earlier gastric stretch, which in turn signals to the brain that we're full. The faster arrival of chyme in the small intestine also leads to an enhanced intestinal stretch, and that may have an even more profound effect on satiety than the stomach. Thus, the anatomical changes in each bariatric surgery force the patient to eat smaller portions by rewiring the stretch reflexes that connect the gut and the brain. That's most profound immediately after the operation and persists for many months, but eventually becomes weaker. The second mechanism of action, malabsorption, doesn't happen to any meaningful degree with the sleeve gastrectomy. Nonetheless, it does with the Ruin Y gastric bypass, the one anastomosis gastric bypass, the duodenal switch, and the Sadie S. That's because part of the small intestine is bypassed in each of those procedures, and the small intestine is where the vast majority of nutrient absorption takes place. For example, with the Ruin Y and one anastomosis gastric bypass, the entire duodenum is bypassed, and with the duodenal switch and Sadie S, some or all of the jejunum is bypassed. Even though the small intestine is incredibly adaptive, with different sections having the capacity to take on the roles of others when needed, these bariatric surgeries seem to bypass too much of the small intestine for full adaptation to occur, or disrupt the normal secretion of digestive enzymes. Therefore, some of the energy yielding nutrients from foods and beverages never actually find their way into the body, adding to the energy deficit that leads to weight loss. Nevertheless, the degree to which malabsorption impacts the total energy deficit and weight loss is in question. Data for the one anastomosis gastric bypass, duodenal switch, and Sadie S is limited. And in gathering information for this video, I couldn't locate any publications that quantified how much total energy is lost in the stool. However, ample data is available for the Ruin Y gastric bypass, and it appears that for this procedure, malabsorption contributes to no more than 10 or 11% of the energy deficit. The malabsorption with the Ruin Y comes entirely from fat malabsorption and occurs even when a patient has normal bowel movements. Overall, the suggestion that a procedure is malabsorptive is misleading because malabsorption doesn't appear to account for a large part of weight loss after bariatric surgery. If malabsorption contributes significantly to weight loss, for instance, the patient has many loose stools per day, it's more likely a complication of the surgery than a feature of it, 
and it requires further investigation by a physician and a dietitian if it's suspected to be diet related. Finally, micronutrient malabsorption is a feature of bariatric surgery, but it doesn't explain how bariatric surgery works to treat obesity. After all, micronutrients aren't energy yielding nutrients. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you hit the like button, share it with a friend, and shop for more free and exclusive content by clicking the link down in the video description. At this stage, we've seen that bariatric surgeries work through restriction, malabsorption, or a combination of both, but classifying them in this manner has fallen out of favor. The main reason is we now accept that changes to gastrointestinal hormones are a powerful mechanism of action that all procedures share. Specifically, bariatric surgery produces a change in hormone secretion by enteroendocrine cells, which are found throughout the gastrointestinal tract. Examples of hormones produced by these cells include ghrelin, glucagon-like peptide 1, glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, peptide tyrosine tyrosine, and cholecystokinin. Out of all of these enterohormones, the most relevant is GLP-1. GLP-1 is released by the L cells of the ileum when they're exposed to nutrients. It's an insulinotropic hormone, meaning it enhances insulin secretion and contributes to improved glycemic control. It also decreases intestinal motility and activates part of the central nervous system that leads to increased satiety. You may be familiar with GLP-1 if you know the drugs Wagovi and Ozempic, which are a synthetic form of the hormone. Physicians prescribe Wagovi to promote weight loss, and Ozempic was traditionally a diabetes medication that used its insulinotropic properties, but is now being used for weight loss too. Because bariatric surgery leads to a faster and higher exposure of nutrients to the small intestine, it enhances the secretion and activity of GLP-1. There's also evidence that bariatric surgery leads to the enhanced secretion of other hormones like PYY and CCK, which promotes satiety, and GIP, which promotes glycemic control. However, these changes are currently less established. Finally, Ghrelin is a hunger hormone that's impacted by these procedures. It's primarily produced in the fundus of the stomach, which is removed with the sleeve gastrectomy, duodenal switch, and SADI S. The decrease in ghrelin appears to be most significant in these procedures and is far less influential with the Ruin Y and the one anastomosis gastric bypass. Collectively, an increase in satiety hormones, a decrease in ghrelin, and an improvement in glycemic control work to reduce the desire to eat and contribute to weight loss. Two other areas being looked at as mechanisms of action for bariatric surgery include changes to bile acid metabolism and alterations to the gut microbiota. Bile is most well known for its role in fat digestion. It's produced by the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and secreted into the duodenum, where it emulsifies lipids so they can be broken down and absorbed. However, bile acids have also been shown to have a broader physiological function by binding to receptors in the liver that play a role in glucose metabolism and feeding behavior. Interestingly, bariatric surgery results in increased systemic bile acid levels. It's believed that this change positively affects glycemic control and decreases appetite. Last but not least, there's growing evidence that the gut microbiota is connected to body weight and energy metabolism. Both animal and human studies have shown that bariatric surgery can quickly change the gut's bacterial composition, and the changes that occur may play a role in metabolic improvements and weight loss. For both bile acids and the gut microbiota, I'd say the extent of their impact on bariatric surgery as a treatment for obesity is unclear. Yet, they are additional examples of how the mechanism of action is almost certainly multifactorial. 
In summary, the traditional classification of bariatric surgery as restrictive, malabsorptive, or combined is outdated due to a newer understanding of these procedures having multiple downstream effects on human physiology. Most importantly, we must acknowledge that bariatric surgery has a powerful influence over the secretion and activity of various gastrointestinal hormones that enhance satiety and improve glycemic control. Still, our understanding of how bariatric surgery works is incomplete and continues to evolve. In the next video, I'm going to explore how bariatric surgery affects micronutrient absorption and what we can do as clinicians to combat it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.